So welcome everyone to the People, Passion and Purpose podcast with Pungi. So today is a very interesting uh, guest I have with me, uh, Sir uh, Alfonso Kurian with me, sir. Uh, sir, I forgot to add your th- full name. So I did, did I get your name right first of all? Yeah, it is Alphonse Kurian Kamicheril is a full ah, name. But again, Kamicheril. mostly people go by Alphonse Kurian or Alphonse or Kurian. <laughs> yeah, Kamichil in Kerala, we have the family name. And ah, that's okay. on the record, it's all the three names. Yes. Awesome. So, thank you, sir. Thank you for gracing this podcast. So, uh, before I actually have questions for sir, I just want to introduce him in just a few things, a few lines. So, just before we started on, uh, he said, I have not made any notes. Everything is in my blood. So, this podcast is about uh, blood. And, uh, you know, sometimes we say blood is thicker than water. Uh, but this this is something uh, very interesting uh, to just just even listen to this. So I, I received a WhatsApp forward from one of my uh, cousins saying uh, you should have uh, sir on this podcast. And I said okay, let let me uh, just just read it out to you. So uh, he is uh, somebody who works in in voluntarily as somebody who maintains a database of blood donors uh, are called the Lions Bloodline. And uh, on an easy average, three to five people ask for uh, blood donation from that and people are uh, able to make that work. And overall, uh, he's a charter member for the Bangalore Sanjay Nagara Lions Club. And uh, he has helped collect 92,700 odd units of blood so far. And uh, at that, I was like, oh, that is just wow. Uh, you know, and... <laughs> I just, just wanted to have you on and uh, so thank you so much, uh, sir, for coming on to this and uh, sharing your thoughts and hopefully we are able to inspire more people who listen to this to donate uh, blood and save lives. Thank you for coming on board. So you, My pleasure. First questions first, sir. So uh, how did this start uh, for you and how is it uh, going for you? Uh, manage this bloodline yeah uh, yeah i'm alphonse kurian kamicheril as i said and uh, how i started this is um, i had joined the lions club of bangalore sanjay nagar as a charter member 33 years back and uh, well one of the small activities that we used to do was the blood donation camps which we had a few camps one two camps in a year and gradually it increased at that point of time i was in service as working in Indian Telephone Industries, Bangalore, as in HR department. And uh, basically, with I must have a flair for social service. So this blood donation somehow got into my blood, and we started increasing more and more camps. And uh, I took a lead when I was in the Lions Club, Sanjay Nagar, having camps. And with our Lion members, we used to do a few camps initially, then a little more camps. And we used to volunteer at the camps. Mostly, it was through the Lions Blood Bank initially. Mm-hmm. Then as we moved ahead, uh, we found that, you know, there's a lot of camp collections happening. But then there's also a requirement for blood in different hospitals. And I'm talking about 25 years back when we were not having mobile and no mm-hmm. internet. So it was to be calling on landline. And then landline. we tried to, yes. And we used to try to bring, I, we brought out a small directory of blood donors. Mm-hmm. Maybe 25 years back. And um, with about 250 names listed group wise and gave it to the donors and the blood bank, some of the blood mm-hmm. banks. And so seeing that people started, you know, c- connecting to us and all that. And luckily for us, after about four editions of that, which came out in alternate years, and those days it was, you know, the normal, des- uh, what do you call the data entry and all that corrections. Uh, more and more people came in and then once or twice we had some media coverage and we got more and more people enrolled up to the, when the media used to put it because it's a very powerful tool. Mm-hmm. So then the camps started increasing and we started trying to have repeat camps in the same corporate or college which used to happen, mm-hmm. whereby we used to have more than one camp in a year for them. And as we increased, this database also increased and uh, we were getting good responses from people then enrolled who would respond to donate in the hospital wherever the patient is admitted. Then gradually when the internet came, we had a website. The website was www lionsbloodline.com Now, this website is even there now, but at that time when we introduced this website, we had the data of the donors on the site, blood Mm -hmm. group wise. 
giving our name, contact number, office area, residence area. But then we found, you know, people would be calling donors and then sometimes you would have already donated. It may not be updated or in a meeting and you can't come. Anyway, it was happening. And then um, we started felicitating blood donors on World Blood Donors Day on a Sunday following it, which incidentally is on 14 June and next week is it again now. So th that functions also, you know, we sort of thanking the donors for whatever they have been doing. Because you find when I'm in need, I scout around and when somebody gives and I get my requirement, uh, oh yeah, somebody came and donated and we forget and he's again doing it third time. So when we had these functions and when somebody says I've done four times in a year and all that and so many times, it was an amazing result. Then when in, uh, after the website came, then later when the WhatsApp came, we tried through Facebook also. We made WhatsApp groups, blood group wise. Mm -hmm which is really working very well in the sense we have made different WhatsApp groups for different blood groups. And then those who can donate, we give the patient requirement saying that if you can donate in X hospital for patient Y, please contact the attendant. Whereby mm -hmm. the donor would, uh, the patient would not be trying to connect. The willing donor connects the patient side. Mm -hmm. So this became more effective. And then what we use the website now is to capture the donors of the uh, database of the willing donors add it to the WhatsApp group so that, you know, the, and then there were some people who had apprehension on the privacy and all that when you have the data exposed. But now, today's scenario is that we get at least about 15 to 20 requirements per day of patients mm -hmm. in different hospitals because then everybody has saved the number and all that. We post in the mornings and then at the end of the day, we get on an average three to five persons against the 15 to 20 requirements that we post. Three to five who go and donate blood in different hospitals, maybe uh, closer to their area of work or residence mm -hmm. and all that. And that 92, 93,000 units what we collected have been collected in the past 25, 26 years where we have been associated with most of the blood banks in Bangalore. Be it the Kidwai Hospital, Victoria Hospital, Nimmans, Indira Gandhi, Bowring Hospital, all the government sector then the private hospitals and also the voluntary blood banks. Because some, then we started getting more than one camp in a day or sometimes mm -hmm. multi-unit companies would want on the same day or different days. So that itself, and then, you know, we would make a personal appeal to those people in the camps. If they're interested, please enroll on this. So it started going. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also had this very good collections going on and all. When fortunately or unfortunately, the corona came in mm, and yeah. there was unfortunately a very big stop. People were afraid and even if you wanted to donate, you could not even go nearby. And if it's a Correct. COVID hospital, we all know. The good thing that happened there, I feel, is that you know most of the blood banks started getting blood mobiles, mm. which could come out from the hospital, which even now is being used because people still have a fear of donation and all that. So numbers have reduced. But at least a blood mobile, if you can, four people can donate in a van at a time. It can be parked in different mm -hmm. locations. So that is going on. Then the stories, what we get of the struggle of the patient is known only when somebody is a patient looking blood. People say O positive is a very common group. But let me tell you honestly, if now today there is someone who wants O positive in the next one hour, it's so tough to find out. One is the willingness of the donor, the distance Correct. and all that stuff. So that way I say all groups are needed. It's not that that's the most common group and uh, AB negative is the rarest, but you still need it. And only the person who needs the blood can, can understand. In Corona time, we came to know of the challenge of thalassemia children. See, mm -hmm. Earlier, when they were having requirement of blood once in three weeks transfusion, just imagine from the time the child is detected, lifelong unless he goes for a bone marrow transplant with lockdown people could not even come to the blood bank to donate and we found that you know every three weeks at the time i also realized the value of you know trying to get and we tried to then create some savior volunteers group who would try to adopt a child and go for him once in three months mm. and these children are mainly coming from outstage outside bangalore those who are at, mainly attached to that indira gandhi institute of child and the government hospital and uh, lockdown was a big, big challenge for them. So they also come for camps. We have been trying to support these children. 
and you go to Kidwai or HCG or any of those cancer hospitals, once a patient is admitted, the number of units of blood or what you call the platelet, single donor platelets, mm -hmm. or even granulocytes, it's much, much a big, big challenge. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, when we, the personal satisfaction, we get that, you know, out of 15, at least two donors, two persons could benefit is the only thing, but then feel sad that there were so many who could not. And then one more thing, what I always feel is that Bangalore is a city which should never have a shortage of blood. Just imagine the young, healthy persons that we have in this place. I don't can't give the direct statistics of the daily requirements, but even if one person, I mean, a person donates at least once a year, I am sure we will have no shortage of blood at all in any of the blood banks. Since we don't donate, we have the shortage, and if it is the Earlier, we could manage with the cam where the blood bank goes to the office and the donor comes, have some fun, donate and come off. Mm -hmm. But the same thing, if the donor is to go to a hospital, it's, you know, things ties on the traffic, the time, etc. So that is what we have been doing. And this Lions Bloodline has been helping a lot of patients every day. And we are hoping we can get more and more persons to come forward, especially if thalassemia, cancer, cancer relapse, accidents. And we have, you know, Bangalore has so many of hospitals, super specialty, and a lot of cardiac cases. We have a lot of people coming, not only from Bangalore, not only from Karnataka, but even outside. Just imagine going to an outside place or a rural village here coming in. He does not even know the difference of the blood groups or the platelets part and struggling. But anyway, at least something is better than nothing. That's what has been my thing, and we have been moving forward. Thanks to Lions Club of Bangalore, Sanjay Nagar, who supported this movement whose members have been always with us, coming for camps, helping in a lot of ways. And even next week, we also have a few camps lined up for different, different hospitals. And uh, the main thing what I look forward is if eligible persons above 18 years and up to 60 or even up to 65 now for people who have been donating blood, being more than 50 kgs, register yourself. If you would like to be added to the database as a willing donor, our website is www dot lions l i o n s blood b l w o d l i n e dot com. Then during especially during Corona, when some people who were out from out of Bangalore started work from home, moved out to different cities, we sort of made different groups or even other cities outside Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Numbers are very small, but we are able to coordinate more in Bangalore, and they are also who have been very active. They continue. So we now have persons, a number of them who have donated more than 100 times. This is mainly the platelets because they can donate at least once in two weeks. So, so that is the guidelines about 24 times in a year. But again, mm -hmm. there are a number of them whose platelet counts are very good, who can, their plate, the platelets regenerate very fast. So even after three, four days, if the count is again, okay, they can donate. So we feel we should not be overdoing it. But there are these good Samaritans who feel that when I am eligible and then, you know, out of 10, only five are eligible, two are eligible, let me continue to do. And now there is also a concept of double dose SDP, which some of the hospitals collect so that, you know, one dose goes for two patients. So this we have now 100 centurion donors quite a bit. Double centurions we have and also we have one or two triple centurions who have crossed 300. Exactly. So when they stand in front of the crowd of blood donors of public saying, I have donated 240 times. Oh my God, it's, you know, awesome. And then people get uh, inspired to come in and ask them how it is. The In fact, they are the celebrities. We also have ladies. It's not only men who donate. There are ladies who donate blood. There are ladies who donate platelets and even who have donated granulocytes. Of course, for the granulocyte donation for the ladies, a lot of restrictions. But then again, they were able, especially platelets also. The sad thing is that most of the blood banks, they try to, you know, because most of the ladies may not qualify, straight away they'll say you bring a male donor. Mm. But there are blood banks who check if they're eligible, make them donate. So why you, it's not that they are not de eligible to donate at all. So they have, uh, we have ladies who have crossed even 100 donations, who have crossed 50 donations. There are a couple don donors, husband and wife donating. We have the father and the son on his 18th birthday makes his first donation. In such cases, we try to, you know, give them a proper, or at least in the blood bank, if we know in advance, please give us a rose or a chocolate, some sort of an encouragement. And there are these youngsters after donate, they do it even every three months after that. 
Correct. We had a typical case of a student who was in a Ramaya engineering college. After his first donation, he wanted to make it and was added to the database, but he was finding it difficult to donate during the working hours. So then what we suggested is, why don't you do a walk-in blood donation at Ramaya Blood Bank itself? So he used to do that, at least in his engineering time itself. He has done more than uh, four times in a year. And he has completed engineering and following in his father's footsteps, keeping on donating blood. Lots of stories like this. There are stories of, you know, husband, wife and children coming and donating together on their wedding anniversary or the son's first birthday and all that. And, you know, these sort of things keeps on inspiring. We try to post on social media, especially on Facebook about that, hoping, you know, more and more people come forward. It's a small drop what we have done. The requirement is still very much there. And uh, I hope such sort of uh, media broadcasts or podcasts will help us get more and more donors. And another thing I tell you is anyone wanting to sue this difficulty, just walk into any blood bank, especially of a government hospital, and you will see the struggle of the poor man searching for blood. Uh, it is really painful. Again, another one, unfortunate event what's happening of late with all this Google Pay and all that, is that there are some antisocial elements who will tell, okay, there's a, I understand you have a requirement, I can come and donate, but you know, I don't have the bus fare or the auto fare, mm. send me the money. It has been reported in the media also. They, you know, sometimes these people in anxiety give the money and that's it. It doesn't come. Yeah. Uh, so I'm you know, telling people that, you know, at least please, and this is the, blood donation is a voluntary activity. There is no payment to be made or involved. It is just somebody's passion to come and donate to help somebody else. But it is this small group of antisocial which, you know, gives a very bad feeling to us and we feel sad about it. We try to tell people also don't ask for any, pay any money while donating. Well, after the donation, a cup of coffee or you want to do that, something else. But before that, three-fourths of the time, it's uh, bogus, which is a very, very sad part. Mm, yeah. I think if it becomes like that, it, it, it is very, very, uh, very tough on the people who are very anxious to get blood. And then uh, it, it is a real, really bad practice uh, to do that. Uh, but yeah, sir, uh, in college, one of the things that were really, really uh, happening uh, places were, one of the places we really wanted to be was in the blood donation camp. So uh, usually every year it happened. And then uh, uh, some of the times, you know, a lot of our friends used to go and that, that sort of a josh that everybody is giving. So let's also give, uh, really helped us. Uh, but there are a lot of people, uh, you know, who I know who are uh, who not yet donated blood even once. So what do you have to say to uh, people like that to encourage them to start? Yeah. In fact, colleges are a very, very inspiring place where you see the, the crowd coming, the boys, the girls, and then come on, come on, you donate. Somebody will be, no, 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 I'm scared. And then you see that girl, she is donating, see that boy who is donating. And some of them do come forward after seeing how it is. And when they come to this, you just please observe. We are not asking you to donate today. If you feel fine, donate or at least next time you can. And this is the best place for you to get over your fear in your own front circle. Rather than when somebody in your family wants and your intention mm. and walking into a blood bank where, you know, the atmosphere is totally different. Here it's a fun sake and you do it and yes. We have had. And then, you know, sometimes the young boys and girls, either the hemoglobin is not up to 12.5 or the weight is less. They say, no, no, please, 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 I want to donate. At least take a little bit. But, you know, the norms are norms and they can't violate that. But yes, uh, it's very, very encouraging to see the youngsters are really coming forward and we're looking more for that. Of course, they can't come out, at least in the campuses when it goes and they see once you donate second time, then they overcome that entire myth, you know, people think and there are some people who think like, you know, movies, you just lie and the blood is drawn from you and transfused directly to the <laughs> next patient. So we have to tell them that's only in movies, not in reality. In reality, you have to donate only in a blood bank. And even after donating, there it takes about six to seven hours for the blood to be tested. Then only it can be transfused because someone says in emergency, come to this nursing home, they will draw the blood and transfuse. And we have to educate them that it is not like that. So we will have to get this. And another thing is, unfortunately, we have yet to have that networking. Like, you know, sometimes one ex-blood bank may have blood. Another hospital may be needing, but, and they may issue it, but they will ask you to replace in that mm -hmm. uh, blood bank itself by any group. Well, unless someone replaces, how does the next patient get the blood? Correct. And there's also another myth. People think that, you know, I have donated blood. Why are they charging? Well, 
blood is not charged for. There is a testing fee which is payable for any patient who receives blood, whether the patient's family respond, donates or if it's from a blood bank. The government themselves have notified rates. And of course, maybe depending upon your room and all tariffs may be there, but it, there is always a charges which is paid, which is a testing charge. Whether you donate or you don't donate, that amount is to be paid. So even sometimes people think in a camp, oh, we give you 60 units when we wanted it is charged. Well, that's a testing check because the kit itself is about over 200 rupees and the, all the blood tests have to be done, including for HIV, AIDS and all. Anywhere you go, it's there. So their charges have to be borne by them. Otherwise, it's all fine. Then voluntary blood banks, especially say Lions Blood Bank and all, they do certify and write on the certificate that should you spouse, self-spouse or parents need blood, we will issue one unit of blood free of testing charges also. Uh, to the donor who has donated. Of course, that's subject to condition that wherever the patient is admitted, accepts blood from a blood bank. Mm. And we also find that very few who are donors you really use that benefit at all because it's I want to help somebody. It's not like a bank I've deposited and take it back when I need it. Mm. And there's a shelf life also. And the de demand is so huge, the blood is not in storage for a long time. And you know, nowadays blood is split into components like platelets, plasma, pack cells. Shelf life for platelets, which is a random donor, is only five days. Mm -hmm. And uh, plasma is one year, the other one is 35 days. So, and then single donor platelets, a shelf life is only five days. But then you have no choice when you are in need. If the blood is not there, we have to look for blood. So, uh, that's the only solution. What I find is please come forward, keep donating. Those who are 18 on their birthday or later, or with the family, or in college, or any place. And if someone wants to, Organize a blood donation camp because we tie up with all the hospitals. We can get any blood bank to come. Well, the only thing is we should know a real, an approximately realistic figure of likely donors. But there are some people, they'll say, oh, we'll expect 100 donors, we'll expect 200. But in reality, the numbers are very less who will actually donate. So, you know, there's no point telling that I'm going to get 150 donors and the blood bank comes prepared for that. And at the end of the day, it's only 10 people who donate. It's mm. a waste of time, manpower and all that. But yes, the requirement is so much that we do have these things happening. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's uh, who has no idea about the whole process, uh, would you explain? You know what what what's the process like and uh, yeah, how what happens sure. after that? Sure. Uh, see, anyone who is above eighteen years of age, weighing forty five kg, but actually they take it as fifty kgs not suffering from any ailment, not on any medication, can safely donate blood once in three months for a male. And now the, for the females, it's made as once in four months. For both of them, the hemoglobin has to be above 12.5. Mm -hmm. So parameters are the same, whether it is male or female. But in females, they should not be donating during their menstrual cycle and also one, month, one year after their, preg during pregnancy and post-pregnancy also. So that's the only challenge. Once it is, uh, once they do the testing, uh, one second, I just, yeah, yeah. one second. Sorry, the charge is getting over. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the moment they, and they should always have the normal breakfast, or lunch. Never donate on an empty stomach. Empty stomach. And be truthful. Never donate. You should have had something and not needed to have a very heavy thing, a normal thing. But by normal means, if it's a breakfast, like idli, dosa, something, not just bread and milk or oats. And then when you fill up the, there's a registration form which gives all the uh, questions about whether any ailments and, you know, whether you had a tooth extraction, there's a waiting period. If you have a tattoo, there's a waiting period of six months, which has been increased to one year, ear mm -hmm. piercing, so many things, a minor surgery, major surgery, go through all that. Once you feel it's okay, you come to the uh, register, I mean, come to the blood bank area, because they check for the hemoglobin. It's just a prick on the finger, just they take two drops. And then if the hemoglobin is 12.5 and above, Go find for the medical where the doctor checks the BP, the pulse, asks for the history and all those. And only if the doctor is convinced that the donor is in good condition, then he goes in for the blood donation. 
Now, the actual donation takes hardly three to four minutes. The actual donation from the time they prick and take the blood. But after the blood is drawn in the blood bank, inside the blood bag, which could be either 350 ml or 450 ml. And 450 ml is drawn in respect of uh, donors whose body weight is above uh, 60 kg. And uh, the doctor also feels it's fine. And then after the donation, they ask you to lie on the bed for some more time. It's basically for the blood to clot. And then once the clotting happens, they apply a small cotton and a plaster. Ask you to sit for a little while. Then go over to the refreshment area. Have some light refreshment of a juice and biscuits, which is given by the blood bank or the NGO who organizes the camp. Ask them to wait for some time. It's basically, this waiting people sometimes, you know, say, I'm okay. But... At times, someone may have some giddiness or dizziness, and especially mm -hmm. first-time donors, you know, they have that psychological fear. So this 10-15 minutes is given so that you make sure that the donor is fine. And we would not like someone to faint there and all that thing. But even if something happens, nothing to worry. All the technicians, whoever is drawing are qualified. The doctors also, they, they'll come and see that, you know, you lie down, raise your feet, whatever it is, and then go back home. So safely, and they say, I mean, even smokers, Ideally, not to giving up smoking is the best, but if you still want to, after smoking, keep at least a gap of one hour. But post donation, please don't smoke for at least two hours. Also, alcohol on the previous day is not allowed. I mean, not good. And ultimately, see, the blood has to benefit someone. Mm. So, and be truthful in whatever we are having. This, you when you're on antibiotics, you can't donate because the thing is, you don't know the reaction that will happen to the next person. Ah, Plus, perfect. you are yourself not well. So, and if an infection or something like that. So, any healthy, normal, and then you now the latest trend is the donor who keeps donating blood, chances of his heart attack, all those things are reduced. And it's like, you know, you're re um, getting into new blood generated. Like in a well also, those in the villages, we know we clean the well, throw out the water, and then the blood comes back. Same way you donate, and next 24 hours, the blood is recouped in volume. But maybe for hemoglobin, it takes a little more time. That's why they say keep the gap of three months. For men and four months for ladies for the next blood donation. But whereas after a blood donation, in a gap of 28 days, you can donate platelets, single donor platelets. Okay. Now, the single donor platelets, people who have had dengue, and if their platelet counts have fallen very below, it's a struggle. In single donor platelets, the body weight of the donor has to be above 60 kg. His veins have to be more prominent. And Total time, he may have to spend about half uh, three hours in a blood bank compared to about half an hour for the normal blood donation. First, when he comes, again, they do all the parameter checks. Mm -hmm. Then they check whether the vein is fine. If it's fine, then coming in for the actual procedure, it takes one hour to one hour, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. where they draw the blood. The blood goes into a centrifuge. The platelets are removed. The blood comes back to the donor. So this cycle of our five liters being circulating takes about uh, one to one and a half hours. And already, if somebody is on the machine, we will have to wait till that donor finishes. Correct. Mm. So some, some of the blood banks may have only one machine or two machines. Like there, of course, Manipal has four machines. Some hospitals have more than one. And there's a challenge. And you also don't know how many, you know, the struggle people get more people there. And uh, if they are not coordinating how time factor, you know, they, the blood bank may not be able to accommodate all of them who come. And you are not sure whether the donor who comes will qualify to donate or not. So mm. you get three, four people, only one may qualify. And a single donor plate, is the charges, because the entire thing is a disposable kit, the charges maybe uh, it varies from 12,000 to 14, 15,000. It's a costly thing, but mm -hmm. person with dengue whose platelets have fallen below 10,000, 5,000, it's a big, big struggle. So Correct. we can't help it. The third one is a granulocytes donation, where same thing like the platelet SDP donation, instead of the platelets, this thing is drawn. But in granulocytes, maybe you need three visits. The first one for the testing. The second one, they give you, a, if you're qualified, they give you a booster injection for boosting the stem cells into your bloodstream. And nine hours post that injection, they draw the uh, granulocytes. So you may have to go twice or thrice, and that takes a little more time and cumbersome. And so people have already done the platelets, they find it much more easier. So 
the best thing is to progress progressively blood donation platelets and granulocytes again you know the distance they don't advise to do too many granulocyte donations unlike sdp and uh, yeah patients suffering from cancer and all have all these struggles mm -hmm. So, sir, you are saying uh, that the blood donation can be done in three places, three three modes of uh, one is platelets, one is the full uh, blood count, and the other is the granulocytes, correct? So, I, uh, and you are also, I think, also from my own experience of uh, working with a few organizations, like specifically uh, for young kids with thalassemia, and then there are uh, uh, people who have, say, accidents or generally for general need of uh, blood blood is definitely there uh, for a lot of people constantly across Bangalore, across different areas. So what uh, uh, what are some of the other things that, you know, people need blood for? Or is, is it the only spaces where, you know, the uh, constant need for blood is there? Yeah. I mean, one thing is when there's a, you have become anemic and your hemoglobin has fallen low, the other one is, is children suffering from thalassemia who need regularly blood cancer, leukemia, all those children. And those who are trying to fight cancer after chemotherapy, also they do need. If they are gone bone marrow transplant, then they may need either of these components, depending upon case to case. Accidents, delivery cases, and delivery is something you know may need, may not need. But then what do you do? You have to, I tell people, if it needed, mm -hmm. have the blood available in Keeping it standby at that time, that person may may not be available. Uh, then maybe sometimes bleeding, or there some there have been cases of baby the baby in the womb of the mother also needing or they needing blood transfusion mm -hmm. immediately on delivery because of they have jaundice and then they have to arrange the blood in advance. Another thing is burn injuries. For burn injuries also there's a lot of requirement for blood or any of the blood components maybe plasma and all those things, mm, cardiac surgeries. And you do not know. And then now there are lots of uh, organ transplants, taken, liver transplants or kidney mm. transplant. And you may need for both, for the donor and the recipient. And uh, you know the blood banks, unless they have the blood available and matched, you can't even start the procedure. Mm. And sometimes if it's a cadaver donation, which is happening, and you know they have to arrange the blood at very short notice and keep it available. Mm. So these are, I think, some of the major. Th anything can happen at any time for anybody. So we really don't know. And so the, the good things what we saw was last week. You know, we saw that train disaster. Correct. Uh, the goodness of mankind is so much that you know people were queuing in there. And it's the only thing what I felt is that you know it's not that only it's such a disaster that we do need. If we can make it as a habit, then it's mm -hmm. good. Yes, a disaster time when you need suddenly more, it would have been nice. In fact, my first blood donation when I came to Bangalore was when we had the circus tragedy. There were announcements in the radio that blood was needed. And that's the first time I donated in Bangalore. I donated mm -hmm. earlier at the Victoria Hospital. And we had people lining up. So I also feel that, you know, when there's a calamity, the goodness of mankind comes forward. The other one, we are not aware. We think, okay, it's like a medical shop. I go to buy paracetamol. I go to a blood mm -hmm. bank and blood is available. Uh, unfortunately, blood is not manufactured. Only the manufacturer is the human body who has to donate blood. And yes, the donor also should keep good habits to see that he is healthy. So most of the time, like some of the very active donors give all the credit to their spouses for the good food they take at home and making them you know, eligible for donating. And even sometimes the spouses also come forward and donate, children donate. Um, yeah, so... The only thing is when someone in need, when we have it, then only the real pain is felt, I feel. And if you come to a hospital or come to Kidwai or Indira Gandhi, where these Talismia kids are there, it's such a str struggle. Of course, people who are working in city with IT and background nowadays with WhatsApp and all, maybe the front circles come forward. But how many times will they come? Yeah. So, and because the need is very, very urgent. And I think you said three weeks once is when there needs to be a transfusion. For the thalassemia. Mm -hmm. And and the, the thalassemia child, when is around 12, 13, the requirement is for two units. Okay. Mm -hmm. So twice a month. And then there are families, 
mostly the thalassemia kids when they have the second child that also unfortunately has thalassemia so they don't do the testing and then sometimes they go for the second hoping the second child can be used for a bone marrow mm-hmm. transplant and siblings twins so if you have family with siblings means four units per month and it's very very tough mm. but you also shared of uh, people who have donated 100 times 200 times 300 times uh so you know i think just just hearing that was was something very inspiring and uh, and i i hope uh, with the stories that you've shared your experience that you've shared and more and more people come along uh, start making it a ritual and, and not only an event based uh, donation so uh, like you said in terms of uh, somebody who's a male uh, in terms more than 18 years more than 50 plus kg uh, you can actually donate every three months once and for women it's four months once so it it could become a ritual it it could be as uh, ritualistic as recharging your phone so some of us do it every month some of us do it once a year and even if you're doing it once a year i think there is there's so much of uh, possibilities that you can figure and uh, people may not have to be really uh, anxious for you know getting blood for their loved ones uh, so just just a uh, uh, thought out there for anybody who's listening in now that you've uh, listened to sir and uh, uh, all the stuff that he shared i hope you're inspired to uh, donate uh, 14th of june is uh, world blood donors day you can start with that day or you can start any day even today and tomorrow any time uh, for making this uh, wonderful act and uh, yeah, that's about uh, it from my end in terms of asking questions is there anything that you would like to share sir anything from uh, i you yeah, like i can share? i could just like to add one more thing so you could make a blood donation at any hospital which has a blood bank or a blood bank which is close to your residence or office walk in donations are there because everyone needs blood it's only very rarely that stock is more yeah. so there are some people who make it regularly once in 3 months he stays in x place then other hospital is more closer uh, people staying in kengeri maybe they may go for bgs or people staying in banargatta road either fortis or polo jereva like that or a containment area alliance blood bank is there any place is more than welcome and uh, er, next week most of the hospitals blood banks are trying to promote blood donation saying in house camps or a walk in donation camps we are also trying to do that so you can do it anytime make it as a thing or make it on your birthday or 18th birthday or if the whole family can come in fact uh, right now there's one person who is on a cycle journey right from calcutta covering all india he was in bangalore last week we felicitated him at lions blood bank yelanka then lions blood bank vasanagar and he made his 44th donation which was at kidwai hospital and he had done his previous donation in january in jaipur mm-hmm. and he cycling down and then from here bangalore he left the next day to bommasandra narayana they are felicitated him then we connected him to some blood banks in um, en road hosur e road salem he is to be reaching coimbatore tomorrow with the mission har ghar raktadana at least one donor in the family be a blood donor amazing person jaydeep who has started from 1st of october riding a normal cycle without even gps with him he just enquires people he just have any ask for a location where you are going next he tell sir aap aapko bata do kaun sa next big hospital bada hospital ya cinema theater ya mall ये तीनों आदमी लोग बताएगा और ऑटो रिक्शा का पूछेगा वो सही जगह कर कर देगा एंड ही जस्ट कीप्स गोइंग आई मीन दैट जस्ट सो इंस्पायरिंग व्हेन वी मेट हिम देयर एंड लाइक दैट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल डूइंग थिंग्स ट्राइंग टू प्रमोट एंड वी होप ऑल दिस मीडिया विल आल्सो हेल्प अस आउट एंड आई नो फॉर श्योर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ गुडनेस इन आवर ओन पीपल एंड दे विल कम फॉरवर्ड ओनली थिंग इज दे आर नॉट अवेयर दैट देयर इज अ डायर नीड अनलेस यू हैव समवन इन द हॉस्पिटल स्टार्ट दिस हैव donation you feel the satisfaction of having helped someone or the other and who knows we never know when we ourselves are in need so make it a habit and touch wood so far we have seen the active donors whenever they wanted for someone someone was there to help out because there's a god who also sees all these things that's my wish and the enrollments once again i'll just repeat it is www.lions l i o n s blood b l w o d line l i n e dot com these donors can be in we have donors from all walks of life students yeah. uh, employed professional business people uh, couples and all that and it's not only lions club members it's just the public who can join 
And one wonderful thing is blood has no caste, color, creed, religion. We don't ask, to whom is this blood going? Or whose blood am I receiving? When I need, I need blood. That's all. It's only the groups which matter, whether it's A positive, A negative, AB positive, B positive, B negative. So I do hope with all this, we will get some more donors to donate. And uh, yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, just, just adding some more cherry on the cake. So sir has actually helped in... Uh, conducting close to 1400 donation camps uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just just about uh, floored by uh, the amount of uh, compassion that that you exude and uh, you know the the passion with which you do this and I hope you know I, I can get more people like you onto the podcast that can inspire us in in many many ways uh, thank you so much uh, sir and uh, yeah, keep on donating thank you thank you very much Absolutely. One way to motivate blood donors is to give them a lot of satisfaction and feel wanted for the good act of theirs. There are some progressive blood banks who do give free parking to the donor who has donated blood by giving either a slip which they can give it to the parking uh, collection staff so that they are not charged for the parking on the day of the donation. It's not that the donors need this free parking but it's just a recognition saying that the hospital authorities, the blood bank values their act and, and so that you know uh, it motivates the donors once again. At least you get a free parking on the day of uh, the blood donation at that particular blood bank. Another way is giving them a happy welcome, giving them feel wanted by the response of the staff in the blood bank, starting from the receptionist at the counters, the blood bleeding staff, the doctors there. This is happening in a number of hospitals and we find repeat donations going to those particular blood banks because the donor feels wanted. So these are two small ways which I feel goes a long way to get more donors, donor retainment, which is what is more needed today.